Eliza in the wind. Why would I even want to marry this, this boy? Eliza asked her mother. It was not yet seven in the morning when her mother woke her and began the strange ritual of dressing her up. She was to meet Herschel today in an afternoon tea attended by her family, his family and the matchmaker, Ibrahim. She had never before felt so self-conscious. She was not used to wearing such fancy dress or doing her hair up, which her mother was fussing over fretfully. We have invested a lot of time and effort in finding you a suitable husband, Eliza, Hadassah, her mother said crossly, not to mention the money. But mother, I am not even 16 years old. Why are you rushing me into a marriage when I haven't even been on a date yet or gone to a dance? She complained as she took two barrettes from her hair that her mother had just installed laboriously. Why must you always question the judgment of your father and I? You will never learn to be respectful of our wishes for you, Hadassah moaned. God forbid you may one day even be grateful. Eliza rolled her eyes at this pitiful statement. I love you and Papa. You know I do. I'm just not sure your judgment and hard labors are more for yourselves and not for me. Maybe you are afraid I will choose poorly for my own husband and it will reflect upon yourselves as bad child rearing. The thing about Eliza was not just that she was smart and spoke like an old wise woman, even to her elders. She knew she was smarter than her betters. She had always been a strong-willed and intelligent girl, even when she was small. She would follow the rabbi and question him doggedly about the Torah. It was not the place of a female to affront the leader of the synagogue with troubling gaps in Jewish theology, but it was an outright offense that the interrogations came from a ten-year-old girl. Over the years, she had tempered her abrasive inquiries to a minimum, but instead read the ancient tome herself. She had decided that if the rabbi couldn't or wouldn't answer her, she would find her answer straight from the teachings herself. It was looked down upon, even punishable, but her dissatisfaction with the lack of honest, true-feeling answers spurred her on. How could a kind and loving God want to punish me for yearning to know his every word, she thought. Now here she was again, knowing something her parents didn't know, why her parents were pushing her into this marriage. They were afraid of her lack of interest in boys, even though she would have been discouraged if she did voice such inappropriate desires. She also knew that her parents in some ways wanted her to be another family's problem. She knew they still loved her and didn't want her to disappear from their lives. They were just not equipped to handle a girl who was a woman already. She felt pity on them for their ineptitude. She was not looking down on them for their behavior. She was just questioning their true motives and therefore their intelligence. She knew some grown-ups were not grown up. They could no longer tame her spirit or temper her questioning mind. In their own minds, they had all done what they could about raising her. They were out of ideas and they needed the only help they knew, their faith and customs. Eliza was done here. She had survived the years of shelter and misguided care she needed up to now. It was time to elevate her life, but not by blindly following the ignorant rituals of marriage to a boy she had never even laid eyes upon, or lips, or hands. She knew about love and the dangers that swirled about it, but it was soon time to experience it firsthand and not with a total stranger she hadn't picked herself. Her mother had done all she could with her daughter in preparation for the afternoon ahead and the life beyond. This will be a very important day in your life, dear Eliza, her mother sighed. She rose from her knees and stroked Eliza's hair lovingly. You have no idea, poor mother, Eliza thought to herself. Now, darling, finish putting yourself together and meet us downstairs, her mother said. We leave in half of an hour. Yes, mother. Goodbye, Eliza said tenderly. This stopped her mother in the doorway. Goodbye? Why would you say that? You're such a strange little girl. She closed the door. Eliza thought about the young people she had met at the coffee shop a few weeks ago. They had become good friends to her, and despite their annoying affectations, they were good, kind, and full of wonder and curiosity of the world. They were so open and hopeful, not at all like the people she knew. They would meet and speak of many things, politics, love, and life. She had never been around others who weren't afraid to turn the harsh glare of truth upon any subject. They often quizzed her about the life of a young Jewish woman, for many were completely ignorant of this part of society. Even with her skepticism of her own religion, she gave them all free and open discussion. She knew what she must do now, and she packed her things into a brown paper bag, just clothes and her diary. 
That would be all she would need to arm herself for the battle to conquer the world outside. That and her mind and heart, which were always ready to fly. But today were even stronger than she could ever remember. She lifted the window of her bedroom and took one last look around and smiled. Then she looked at the door that her mother had just closed and said softly and sweetly, Goodbye, Mother. Goodbye, Father.